To find Microsoft Copilot Studio, you open up a browser and then you navigate to copilotstudio.microsoft.com. Hit enter. Here you log in with your Microsoft account, that is fill in your email and password. If this is your first time, you want to choose your region. Choose if you want information, tips and tricks in a newsletter and pick get started. Then we can skip this and we are jumped into the agent builder. Let's build an agent. But before we do that, let's click cancel here and take a look at the overview of Copilot Studio. Down here below, you find the learning resources. Here we have a quick start guide, documentation and the release plan. Really nice. Above those, you can see the templates for different kinds of agents. These are templates to help you get started. Don't worry, we will build more advanced agents later in the course. We can also see that these are called agents. These used to be called copilots, hence the name Copilot Studio, but Microsoft rebranded it. Let's create our first agent. Up in the left corner, you click create. That will open up the create page. Here you click new agent and then the agent builder will open up. I can choose a language for our agent. If I click edit language, here in the drop down, I can choose a lot of languages so our agent can speak Italian, Hindi, Finnish, Danish. Let's stick with English, so I say cancel. We always want to give our agent a great name, a name that says something about what it does, then it will be much easier when you have a lot of agents. So this one will answer questions based on the company Sony's website. So we call it Sony Q&A agent. We can also change the icon right now. It's the default icon here. But if I click change icon, change icon again, I can choose a logo. I downloaded a Sony logo from a Google search. You can do the same. Just remember, it needs to be in a PNG format. Then I hit open and I can now see the logo. I hit save. We want to give our agent a description. Then it will be much easier for the users to know what this agent does. So we can say provides answers to questions about the company Sony, the company's products, etc. And we can say for potential customers, then we can give it instructions. These are rules for the agent to follow. So here we want to tell the agent how to behave. That could be you are an assistant assistant for Sony, which helps answers questions about the company. Always respond politely, professionally and with a touch of humor. We can add startup prompts. That is when we want to publish the agent to other Microsoft 365 platforms such as Teams. Then we can have a startup prompt. The user can click and that will start a conversation. We will leave it blank for now. In the knowledge, I can add different sources. So click add knowledge. Here you can see that we can pick between public websites and SharePoint. Grayed out is Dataverse and a file picker. Don't worry, we can later add those resources and we will also do that here in this course. For now, we will use the Sony's public website. So click that. Here we want to enter a link www.sony.com slash en and I hit add. And that's it. We will just go with the default settings for now. Click add. When we have added this knowledge, now the AI, AI agent got his 
general AI knowledge that is like you're used to from ChatGPT, Copilot, or Google Gemini. So it knows a lot about the world and it will know specifically about the sony.com slash en website. That is the English version. Once we're happy, we go up to the right corner and hit create. That will set up our agent. Wait like five seconds, then the agent will be ready for you and me to test. Here it is. In the middle, we have the overview. We can see the logo, the name, the description, the instructions. In the knowledge, you can see that we have the web page. And we can also see that we allow the AI to use its own general knowledge. Now, also settings that we haven't talked about yet, for example, orchestration, triggers, topics. Don't worry, those are separate lessons in this course. We will go through everything. Let's test the agent. Over to the right, I can test it. Here I can say, when was Sony founded? Hit enter, now the A agent will provide answers to us. Sony was founded in 1946, and we can see a reference to the web page. If I click that, I can see the web page is indeed sony.com slash en, and here we can see something about the history. So we have a source. Close the web page, and when I go back, I can see that we are now jumped to topics. Don't worry, we will cover that as well. Let's just go back to overview. I can ask other questions. For example, how did financial year 2024 Q3 went? Then I want specific results about the financial results. Here we have a brief discussions. We also have two sources. I picked a Q3 here. And what this is, is a PDF with everything in. And yes, it's still from the sony.com slash en website, which we told the, the agent to find information from. Then I can exit it again. Let's go back to overview again, not to confuse ourselves. We don't really have to when we test it, but I just found it a little bit easier. Let's try a prompt that uh, is a little bit out of topic. For example, what is the capital in France? And then the agent will answer. Here you can see the capital of France is Paris. It's a city known for blah, blah, blah. And we can see that this is based on its general knowledge because it says AI generated content may be incorrect. When you see that this, you know that it has based its answers on the general knowledge. There can be good reasons to turn this on. For now, we only want this to be based on the knowledge that it can find on the web page. So what I want to do instead is to disable this AI knowledge in this case. I hit continue, that will disable it. So now we don't want it to answer what the capital of friends is, for example. Let's just clean the window and test it again. I can clean it by starting a new conversation here. And let's just ask the same question once more. What's the capital in France? When I hit enter now, we will see, uh, hello, I'm a Sony Q&A uh, agent, and we will see it resets. It will not answer uh, based on that question. And when we test it in Teams, we'll do that later, it will say, I don't know. Let's publish the agent. Up in the right corner, you hit publish. Hit publish again. And then the agent is being published. Here we can choose where we want to publish the agent to, for example, our web page, or in this case, we want to publish it to Microsoft Teams. I will say that you can have a lot of different sources and it's just whatever your prefer preferences are that will uh, decide where the agent should go. Now we have published it. So go to channels here, and then we can publish it to a channel. Pick the Teams and Microsoft 365. Yeah. Over to the right, we can see that we can add this channel. Right now, we can't do anything, but once I click 
add channel here, we will be able to edit it. So now it will add this one to the team's channel. And here you can see that we can edit it. Again, it turned to a default. So if I want to edit that before I want to see the agent in Teams, I just click Edit Details. This is just information about what a user at Teams see. Let's change this a bit. So here I want to change the color to white. Let's change the icon to the Sony icon like this. And we will have a short description and a long description. So the short description could be something like an agent for Sony. And let's also change the long description here. I will say provides answers to questions about the company, Sony, the company's products, etc. If I click more here, I can also change some of these things. I can also change if I want to add the agent to other users. I recommend you not doing so. So right now it's only for us. Then I can click save. That will save my changes. And now I want to see the agent in Teams. So click here. Then it will ask me to open up Teams. I hit open. Then we will be taking to Teams. And here I want to add the agent. We will also see that some of this is a little bit delayed. So you, you might want to wait like 10, 15 minutes. Then this one will update the logo and the description. When I close here, I can go to my chat. And here you can see I have the Sony Q&A agent. Again, I can say, explain who the Sony CEO is. Hit enter. It will find the information. You can also see the Sony logo down here typing. The current CEO of Sony Group um, is not explicitly. However, for Sony Music Entertainment, the CEO is and the CEO will be. So for different subsidiaries of the Sony Group, we have these. We can see it here and here. I can also say again, when was Sony founded? That was in 1946. We can also see that here in 46 and we have a source here. Then we also try to ask it what was the capital in France. So what's the capital in front. Once I tried this in the test area, we saw that it just disappeared. But here it will say that it don't know. And that's because we turned the AI knowledge off. Here you can see, I'm sorry, I'm not sure how to help you with that. Can you try rephrasing? So whenever we don't ask about questions available on the Sony.com website, it will look like this. Now you want to take the Copilot 365 course, a complete guide on how to leverage one of the other great co-pilots in the Microsoft 365 universe.